the phone again. Uh, hello? Now, who is this? Now, listen, whoever you are, will you stop ringing this number? It's 2 a.m. and we're trying to get some sleep here. Hmm? Huh? Oh, good night. Did they say anything? Mm. No, not a word. Some kook's idea of a practical joke. Oh, let me answer it this time. Uh. Hello? Oh! What do you want? Why are you pestering us? I, I can't sleep. And I won't let you sleep. I hate you and I wish you were dead. First chance I get, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Theater 5 presents I've Got Your Number. Now, now, don't let it get you, Sheila. Just try to put it out of your mind. I wish you were dead. First chance I get, I'm going to kill you. I keep hearing that. Well, it's some crackpot who might not even know your name. Now, look, sweetheart, I won't let anyone harm you. I know, but all that hate in her and meant for me. All right, now stop thinking that way. You don't know who the girl is. You said you didn't recognize her voice. I've never heard it before. That much I'm sure of. Carl, why is it she never talks to you? I don't know. I wish she would. Could it be because she... You know her, and she's not taking a chance you might identify her? What do you think? You're the one I want to think about, honey. Now, come on. Just relax. Hmm? I can't. I'm scared. Why would a strange woman want to kill me? <laughs> no, baby, nobody wants to kill you. It's just talk. Yes, but that's what she said, and I felt her hate. Sheila, try not to think about her. <sighs> All right, I'm sorry, darling. I guess I'm in a state of shock. <laughs> I know. I will take care of this tomorrow. You can just forget her, hmm? All right, I'll try. That's my love. Oh, I do love you. I always lo- Oh, no. Uh, not again. I can't stand it. Now, let it ring. Let it ring all night. Oh, I'll go crazy. We both will. Well, okay. I'll fix it. I wish you'd tear it out of the wall. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Look, look, aren't you going to answer it? Please, maybe she'll talk to you this time. Uh-uh, she won't get a chance. Where are you going? Across the room. Hide the phone. Hide it where? In this drawer. I'll smother it under the bedspread. And the pillow. There. Well, how's that, hmm? Well, it's better, but I can still hear it. Well, that's because you're listening for it. I suppose. That kook will get tired of waiting for us to answer and she'll give up. Oh, no. All right, come on, honey. No, Carl, no, please. I hear that ringing and ringing and ringing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, me too. Honestly, when I find out who... Now, look, you must be off your rocker disturbing us this way. Well? Well, say something. Go on, speak to me. Now, you listen to me. You've said enough to my wife. If you think that... Careful, careful, you'll wake the neighbors. I don't care. Are you listening to me? You're afraid to speak up, afraid I'll know your voice. But so help me, I'll find out who you are, and when I do, heaven help you. How can we find out? I don't know, honey. I, I, I just don't know. I'm too mad to think. I'm too upset to sleep. And I'm afraid she'll do it again. Well, let's not take any chances on that. What can we do? That's what we can do. You mean leave the receiver off all night? Baby, it's almost 2.20. Not much of this night left. <laughs> That's true. But it's risky to leave the receiver off. What if something happens? Something happens? Like what? Well, like a, I don't know, a fire in the building or... Well, maybe Mother takes sick, some emergency. Okay, okay, it's risky, but the receiver stays off. All right. But tomorrow we go to the police. Well, 
Uh, your complaint is a switch. Usually men make the crank calls, call up women they don't know and talk a lot of garbage. We've had over 20 complaints today. But our calls started last week. At first, there was just one or two, and we thought they'd stop. Yes, we took it as a practical joke. You mm -hmm. see, they started the night we got back from our honeymoon. Oh, oh so you're newlyweds, huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, Mr. Fletcher, before you married, were you engaged to somebody else? Engaged? No. Well, but you had another girl. <laughs> sure, several. Oh. Well, you might let me have their names. Well, I doubt if it'll lead to anything. You could be surprised. Well, one lives out on the West Coast, uh, another in Cleveland. Look, I I'm sure the calls wouldn't be long distance. Oh, well, now that you can die a long distance direct, anything's possible. And a lot harder to trace. Mrs. Fletcher, did you perhaps have an ex-boyfriend, one who's... Whose wife now might be out for a little revenge? Well, not that I know of. Hmm. Was there someone you've been quarreling with? Some woman who's got it in for you? Well, I... No, none that I can think of. Uh -huh. Well, we could change to an unlisted number. Well, that's a solution as long as it works. But the trouble is my wife's a piano teacher. Yes, and, and I'd have to give the new number to all my pupils. And I teach at Central Tech... My students must have access to me when they run into problems. Besides, I freelance for a couple of advertising agencies. It's some chore posting a new number with every business contact that I have. Yeah, well, your new number wouldn't have been a secret very long anyway. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Mrs. Fletcher, this voice you heard, about, the, about how old a woman would you say she might be? I don't know. I was so shocked by her venom, it didn't register. She actually threatened to kill you, huh? She said, I wish you were dead. First chance I get, I'm going to kill you. Mm -hmm. And she sounded like she meant it. I've got an idea that might work if both of you are willing to let the police tap your phone. You mean you'd be listening in on all our calls? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm willing. Well, how will tapping our phone help you trace that crackpot? It's a shortcut so you can identify your caller. And let's not take it for granted that she's only a crackpot. She could be a dangerous psycho. No, 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 Carl, not you. Uh, Sergeant Kirk, sit down, Mr. Oh, yeah. Hello? <sighs> Hello? Carl, it's her. Mm. You sure? Hello, if you don't answer, I'll hang up. Well, how come she didn't speak to you? I don't know, but she will call back. And I'll hang up until she does speak. I don't care how many more times you call. You can keep it up all night long. I know that it's my husband's voice that you want to hear, and he is not going to answer the phone no I matter what you... I want you to get old and wrinkled, so he'll hate you too. You took him away from me, you rotten thief. I wish you were dead. I wish you were dead. I wish you'd die in a horrible accident. Oh. I heard what she said. She sounds crazy. She was so out of control that she couldn't have disguised her voice. Threatening you like that, she... Well, she must be a psycho. D didn't you think she sounded kind of young? Well, her voice is on tape now. The police will get her number. <laughs> Well, her voice is familiar, but I can't make it fit any one specific person. Want me to play the tape again? No, no, I, I've heard it five times. That's enough. Carl, what's bothering you? Well, honey, it's... Uh, I don't know, it, it's her crying. But it was rage. I'm not so sure. That's how it hits me. Mr. Fletcher, why don't you come out and tell us what's obvious... The voice on that tape is young enough to be a schoolgirl. All right. 
I'll say it. She could be in your senior art class. How many girls in that class? Oh, there are about 20. Now, this, this girl running a temperature over you, no man could be blind to that. You must have some idea who uh, she Sergeant, is. Sergeant, uh, this is no fun-guessing game. I refuse to name names when I could be completely wrong. But this girl is infatuated with you. Surely that doesn't apply to the whole class. <laughs> well, I don't keep score on schoolgirl crushes. Now, this one sounds to me like a very mixed-up kid. How old are these girls? Oh, 17, 18. 18 isn't exactly a little schoolgirl. Well, if I knew for certain who it is, I'd cheerfully wring her neck for what she's put us through. But I, uh... Well, I... I wonder if a girl who sounds heartbroken would be acting primarily out of spite and malice. No, I don't buy that broken heart bit. This girl's a delinquent, and they cry real easy. The big, fat act to get attention, sympathy. Well, Sergeant, sometimes Look, that's you're the true, teacher. But... I'm only a policeman. But I say we're dealing with a teenage delinquent who's bugging you and your wife for kicks. Carl, I can't go on taking this. Yeah, I know. I know. Well, then I... cooperate with the police, Mr. Fletcher. If you don't put the finger on this girl, you'll be doing an injustice not only to your wife, but the entire community. How many more people do you want her to victimize by telephone just to... Spit out her hate. Well, I'll... Uh, I'll be frank with you. I do suspect two girls in my senior art class. All right, let's have their names. Well... Don't, uh... don't look. Don't look so worried, Mr. Fletcher. The police will catch the girl that's guilty. Yes, yes, I... I'm sure you will, but... Sergeant, before I give you names... I must consult the school psychologist. <laughs> Dr. Hugo, I'm hoping you can tell me which girl it's more likely to be. Well, Carl, I'd need several sessions with each girl to get some idea. Well, that could take a long time. Yes, it could. Whom do you suspect? Well, there's Jean Wicker. And... I know Jean. Suffers from deep anxiety neurosis, overwhelming fears and feelings of inferiority. A difficult home situation, too. Well, she's capricious and... As they say, kooky. But she's got the stuff to be a fine artist. Are you friendly with her? Oh, yes, yes. Well, that is, I was. And what happened? Well, Jean wants to qualify for the Art Institute next semester. With private instruction, she couldn't make it. Jean begged me to give her lessons. Unfortunately, I didn't have the free time. What with getting married and all my freelance commitments. So you turned her down? Hmm. Is she friendly with you now? Oh, no, no, no. Now, she goes out of her way to avoid me. Well, I guess she finds it impossible to forgive you. But is Jean the type to make crank calls? Well, I believe she's capable of it. Who's the other girl? Well, there's Betsy Price. Betsy? Do I know her? And she had a few interviews with you last spring. She was threatening to drop out. Um, a short, dark-haired girl? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's right. You helped her, Dr. Hugo. My impression is that your interest in her welfare contributed greatly to her staying on school. Well, Betsy lives across the street from me, and occasionally we walked home together. Oh, she'd talk about her problems, her mother dead and her father remarried. Oh, she couldn't get along with her stepmother. Hmm. As I recall, she gave a couple of the women teachers here a lot of trouble. What makes you suspect the girl? Well, Doctor, I... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't tell you. It's it's just a hunch. Do you still walk home from school with her? Oh, no. No, my schedule's changed. Which might make Betsy feel you're rejecting her. Carl, it could be either one of the girls. Well, in your opinion, are they delinquents? No. But the girl who's plaguing you and your wife can be charged with delinquent behavior. She could be so deeply disturbed, she's playing out her compulsion to punish you. Well, you think she can be reached? It's possible. Certainly worth your try. Carl, I go along with you. This is more a school problem than a police matter. Uh-huh. Well, how do I stop her from phoning before the police catch her? It would be a mistake to seek her out. She has to come to you voluntarily. Mm, doctor, that won't happen. No, I'm afraid that's impossible. I'm sorry I can't be of more help. 
You'll just have to sweat it out. Hello, I've been waiting for you to call again. Now, look, I am warning you for your own good. Every word you said to my wife is on tape. The police are on to you, and they'll catch you if you... Oh, no! Yes. Yes, you should be frightened. What you're doing is against the law. Now, keep it up, and the police will trace your calls. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Look, I, I can't make out what you're saying. But you had better listen to me. Now, you're in my 4A art class. You avoid me because you're furious with me and want to punish me. Oh, Sergeant Kirk is going to be very angry. I won't about... say your name. I don't want it on tape. But I'll tell you your first initial. It's J or B. No! No! All right, now, don't panic. I want you to call Dr... Carl, will you give me that Sheila, phone? Sheila, will you let go? Hello? 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 She's hung up. Talk to me, Carl. Tell me the truth. Will you stop why? it? I was just getting through to her. Will you tell me what you're hiding? What does this girl mean to you? And Sheila, why are you I'm doing not this? hiding a criminal. She's a schoolgirl. I want her to talk to Dr. Hugo before the police. The way you're protecting her, she means much more to you than just a girl in your class. There must be something personal and intimate between the two of them. Sheila, will you stop being hysterical? I don't know for sure who she is, Well, but... who is J and what does B stand for? You'll go to the police. You bet I will. The only person who has to know her identity is the school psychologist. Now, I only wanted to give her Dr. Hugo's home number. Sheila, he's waiting to hear from oh, her. I know that teachers get involved with students. What is the psychologist trying to help you cover up? You're raving like a jealous that idiot. That girl hates me. She has threatened to kill Sheila. me. She wants me dead. And you are helping her against now, me. Now, honey, you I'm not taking her... sides against you. My responsibility as a teacher is to get that kid to go to Dr. Hugo without any interference from the police. Don't you understand? She's an unhappy, mixed-up child. I understand that she has also made me suffer without cause, and I want the police to get her. A girl like that has got to be punished. As a warning to all other vicious cranks who use the telephone to victimize innocent Sheila, people. Sheila, if you would only... If that's your Sergeant Kirk. I hope it is. Mr. Fletcher, uh, could I see you for a minute? Yes, come in. This is my wife. Sheila, this is Betsy Price. Betsy? Oh, Betsy, was that you? Yes. When you mentioned the initials on the phone, I... I knew I'd be caught, so I... So I ran across the street to tell you. Please call the police. I deserve to get punished. Betsy. Betsy, why? Because you changed. You were so great to me, but you stopped. What did I do? After Daddy got married, he, he didn't have any more time for me. But, but you were so great. You made me feel that you cared about what was going to happen to me. I do care, Betsy. And when, when you got engaged, you never had time anymore to walk home with me, and you were... We're always busy with her. Oh, Betsy, is that why you hate me? It, it felt like my stepmother taking Daddy away from me all, all over again. Oh. I saw you both when you came back from your honeymoon, and I waved to you, and I called hello. You didn't even answer. You didn't even see me. I felt so bad I wanted to die. So I kept on phoning to... Try and hurt you back. Mrs. Fletcher, I'm... I'm so ashamed. Oh, honey. It's so good that you came. Now we can try to help you.
has presented I've Got Your Number, written by Addie Richton, produced and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Donald Buca, Leslie Woods, Nat Poland, Rosemary Rice, and Guy Sorrell. Audio engineers Marty Folia and Neil Pulse. Sound technician Ed Blaney. Script editor Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlostatsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. That's Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.